Hello everyone. Welcome to TCOM 101. Dr. Mike here. In this video, I want to begin a two-part look at the Walt Disney Corporation, the mouse. This would be an example of a company profile. Disney, of course, is the world's largest media company, the world's biggest media conglomerate. Quite a fascinating company that has a huge impact on culture and business around the world. Now, of course, Disney's business has been hit hard, like all media businesses, by the COVID crisis, the great pandemic of 2020. And it's really had a negative effect on Disney's theme parks and resorts, which have been shut down and have laid off many employees. But because Disney is a big diversified conglomerate, it runs other businesses that are really doing well right now, like its media networks, ABC and ESPN, and its new streaming service. So Disney as a whole is still performing well even though much of its business and even some of its movie and TV production has been delayed by the COVID crisis. All right, here's a fun fact about Disney. Did you know Disney has always been recognized as one of the best places to work by the LGBT plus community? It really gets high scores for being a very progressive and understanding and sensitive workplace in terms of inclusion and uh, LGBT issues. Now we're going to take a closer look at the mouse and as we do that I want to ask you to look for evidence of conglomeratization, vertical and horizontal integration, globalization, and attempts and opportunities to build media synergy. These are important business strategies to understand and we can see all of them at work when we take a good, hard, in-depth examination of Walt Disney. So let's start with the idea of a conglomerate. Well, yes, Disney is the world's largest media conglomerate. What's a conglomerate? It's a diversified, giant corporation that's made up of a number of different businesses that may or may not be related. In Disney's case, they're all related. It's a pure kind of media conglomerate. So it owns TV networks, film studios, music, theme parks, character merchandising, many different businesses. Disney is located its headquarters in Southern California, in Burbank, right outside of Hollywood. If you ever go out to Southern California, you might consider visiting the Disney headquarters. It's fascinating. You'll see some cool architecture. This building represents, of course, the uh, the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was Disney's fist, first big successful animated film. And uh, in fact, it won an Academy Award and really helped to launch Disney's career. The Disney company goes back to 1923. The founder, the genius, was Walt Disney, who lived up until 1966. And of course, one of his earliest and iconic figures was Mickey Mouse. Disney had a great idea of having synergy by using TV and theme parks and character merchandising to build an, an empire. Disney has become the biggest media company of the world. Its revenue, its annual revenue, TTM, by the way, stands for trailing 12 months. It's revenue for the last 12 months, almost $60 billion. The company has a big market cap, $234 billion. And it runs a very nice, healthy profit margin, 19%. In case you're interested, Disney has almost 200,000 full-time employees. Now the new head, the new CEO, the big cheese at Disney is a man named Bob Chapek. He's brand new. He just came on board. How would you like to take over uh, the, being the head of Disney right when the coronavirus pandemic starts? Anyway, that's the challenge faced by Disney's new CEO, Bob Chapek. Chapek is replaced a very, very famous man in the media world, the former 
Disney CEO, who was in that position for about 15 years, Bob Iger. Bob Iger left one heck of a legacy when he retired this year and turned the reins over to Bob Chapin. Iger's legacy under, just consider this, under Iger, Disney went out and acquired Pixar, Marvel, Lucas Films, 21st Century Fox, and launched a successful streaming business, Disney Plus. So that's a heck of a legacy to leave. And Disney Plus has become a very important part of the Disney business model, direct to consumer, it's called, at the mouse, direct to consumer. All right, let's consider Disney's mission statement. Disney's mission is to make all of the children happy, right? Yes, but along the way, they'd like to dominate the world and make as much money as possible and to bring value to the shareholders. So here's the formal statement, uh, the mission statement of Disney. The mission of the Walt Disney Company is to entertain, inform, and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling, reflecting the iconic brands, creative minds, and innovative technologies that make ours the world's premier entertainment company. So just looking at that mission statement, you can see that the emphasis on becoming a global company, the premier global entertainment company. Walt Disney, if you read the 10K, you'll discover that Walt Disney is divided into four basic business segments. There are the media networks. Those include ABC and ESPN. And this is the real profit center for Disney right now, the media networks. Another segment includes the theme parks. That's the parks, the experiences, and the products. A third segment of Disney is studio entertainment. That's the film studios. And the brand new segment at Disney is the direct-to-consumer segment or the streaming segment of the business. Let's focus in, in this video, on the studio entertainment and the theme parks. As we look at the Disney Studio Entertainment and all of the film studios, it should be obvious that this is a great example of horizontal integration. If you own multiple film studios, you're making a, a growth by go, a horizontal growth. So the Disney Studios include Marvel, Lucasfilm, the Star Wars franchise, Pixar, Walt Disney Animation, Walt Disney Pictures, Touchstone Pictures, and its latest acquisition, 20th Century Fox Studios. Hey, did you know the highest grossing animated film of all time is a Disney film? This film earned this honor back in 2020 before the COVID um, pandemic hit. Okay, so the highest grossing film, and it may be a couple more years before any other film achieves this mark because of the pandemic. But in 2020, Disney's Frozen 2 crossed the 1.3 billion mark at the global box office. 1 billion is a pretty good milestone right now for a movie. A yeah, billion dollars is a blockbuster. Disney has grown a lot through the business strategy of horizontal integration of acquiring the same sorts of properties, especially in the film studio business. They look at these examples. Back in 2009, Disney, under Bob Iger's leadership, purchased Pixar, the big animation studio that was held and created by Steve Jobs. Okay. Apple's Steve Jobs, and Disney bought that for $7.4 billion. Hey, did you know that the highest grossing film of all time is also a Disney product? Marvel's Avengers Endgame. That movie in 2019 crossed the 2.7 billion mark at the global box office. Disney had a great year in 2019, as I'll explain in a couple of minutes. But going back to the idea of horizontal integration, Disney in 2009 bought the comic book and action hero company Marvel Entertainment for $4 billion. This gave Disney about 150 more characters to base its content on 
and each one of those characters has the potential to produce great synergies and to become a successful franchise. Disney purchased the Star Wars franchise from George Lucas. This happened back in 2012. Disney bought Lucasfilm from George Lucas for $4 billion and took over as the custodians and the guardians of the Star Wars franchise. Now, what did Disney get in this deal? Well, it got a live action production business, a CGI and special effects business called Industrial Light and Magic. It got an audio operation called Skywalker Sound. And most importantly, it got a consumer products division so it could continue to sell all the character merchandise and the Star Wars um, toys and merchandise. Now, Disney's latest big horizontal acquisition was 21st Century Fox. This was a major deal. In 2017, Disney announced plans to spend 22, or 72, 72 billion for 21st Century Fox. And of course, this was in a big bet on streaming. Disney knew it was going to launch Disney Plus and wanted to acquire more assets, exclusive assets for its streaming service to compete with Netflix, of course. Will Disney Plus be a Netflix killer? I don't think so. Netflix is still the big company, has the biggest share of the streaming market, but Disney has added on tens of millions of subscribers in a very short time. But this is the big uh, latest development of Disney, is the streaming service, Disney Plus. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, Disney and uh, 21st Century Fox deal. What did Disney get? What assets did it acquire? Well, it got a number of film studios, 20th Century Fox, Fox 2000, Fox Searchlight Pictures, Fox International Productions. These will probably be merged down into one studio, maybe called 20th Century Fox. It also got a bunch of television production companies, including 20th Century Fox TV, Fox 21 TV, 20th TV, these will probably all be squeezed down into one company, maybe called 20th Century Fox TV. But the best part of this deal for Disney was getting the Fox motion picture and TV library. And so that includes thousands of movies and TV shows like The Simpsons, which Fox, or it's Disney, which Disney can now use to enhance its streaming service. Hey, did you know at one time Disney owned Miramax? That's a famous Hollywood studio. It's made some um, pictures that don't fit the Disney family friendly concept like Pulp Fiction. And it has some associations with some um, characters who have been in the news. But anyway, Disney got rid of Miramax back in 2010. Now, let me talk about 2019. Disney had amazing success right before the pandemic hit. Disney exploded box office records because it brought in 11 billion, 11 billion dollars worldwide in one year. No movie studio ever brought in that much money. In 2019, Disney had seven films that all reached 1 billion at the box office. No studio ever had this level of achievement before. You've probably seen most of these films. They were all highly successful. And a couple of these set records, Avengers Endgame, had the highest box office of all time for any movie. Frozen 2 had the highest box office for any animated film. So it was a hell of a year for Walt Disney and Bob Iger. Now, um, in a company profile, I talk about plans for the future, upcoming Disney movies. I don't know if some of these have probably been delayed. Production has been delayed. Release dates have been delayed because of the coronavirus and the pandemic of 2020. Well, I'm sure maybe one or two of these will achieve a huge box office success. All right, let's talk a little bit about the parks and resorts. Of course, Disney operates a number of parks, not only in the United States, in Florida and California, but also overseas. So this is evidence of globalization. The fact that Disney has theme parks in Paris, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and Shanghai. It's also a, uh, evidence of horizontal integration. 
If you own multiple theme parts, you have become horizontally integrated. And of course, these theme parts offer all kinds of opportunities for synergy and information packaging and the franchise to be built. So an attraction could be based on a Disney movie or, or the character. And of course, these theme parks are full of shops where they can sell Disney merchandise. Now, Disney's latest global expansion was in China. And this theme park to open in 2016. And I know that Disney would like every child in China to take interest in the Disney characters and the Disney products. It's kind of interesting too, in terms of synergy, is that Disney is really starting to tap into the Star Wars and the Marvel movies to upgrade its theme parks. So we'll see some great synergies in the uh, upcoming years at the Disney theme parks based on the Star Wars and the Marvel Studio products. Okay, in the next video, we'll continue to talk about the mouse, the giant Disney. We'll take a look at some of its uh, consumer products. We'll talk about its media networks. And we'll take a look at its newest segment, this direct-to-consumer segment, and it's all about streaming. But that's all I've got for part one of my profile of Disney. Please take care of yourself, each other, all the cardinals in the community, and uh, be safe. Take care.